To maintain the 7,000 kilos which an adult elephant can weigh on the basis of a vegetarian diet, they need to spend a lot of time eating and searching. In fact, they spend three quarters of their life doing just that. A large male consumes around 300 kilos of food a day and the same number of liters of water. Therefore, a large herd must constantly be on the move because it exhausts an area in just a few hours. However, a large part of Africa owes much to the elephants, and to a considerable extent this is due to the fact that their digestive system is not very efficient. Of the vegetable matter they consume, almost 80% is expelled virtually undigested. In this way, the nutrients which over many years the roots of the trees had taken from deep down in the soil are returned to the surface, fertilizing it. If we take into account the fact that an elephant defecates around 30 times a year and produces some 275 kilos of manure, we can see just how important this is. In addition, it transports seeds which are then expelled at a considerable distance from where they were ingested and deposit them with their dose of natural fertilizers, thus guaranteeing germination. They are, therefore, the great gardeners of Africa. If the elephants must travel long distances in search of plants, on the other side of the planet, there is another species that also has considerable difficulties in this respect. Sometimes a gatherer's main problem is simply reaching the places where the food grows. These marine iguanas on the Galapagos Islands are reptiles, generally called cold-blooded, when in fact they simply need the sun to heat up their bodies. That would not be a problem in a climate like this if it were not for the fact that they eat seaweed, and here the Humboldt current makes the water very cold. They have to go where the waves break or enter the frozen water in order to eat. Then their body temperature gradually drops, making their movements increasingly slow and clumsy. They must quickly warm up or else they will die. After a while in the sun they recover, but then they need to eat even more. One after another, they dive back into the cold water, each time forced to swim further out to find the most nutritional banks of seaweed. The further they go, the greater the risk. They must start back when their body temperature is still high enough to allow them to reach the shore. If they calculate badly and cool down too much, their muscles will stop working and they will freeze to death. Some feeding in calm waters have less to worry about, but there the seaweed is of lower nutritional quality than in rougher, better oxygenated water. verge of hypothermia, these warriors of the sea return to the rocks heated up by the equatorial sun. Their lives are a constant fine balance of energy which at any moment could turn against them. That is the price they must pay for exploiting a resource which no one will steal from them.